Let's go back to a story focusing on COVID-19. Limpopo has seen a significant increase in confirmed COVID-19 cases. And remember that the province is also the home of one of the busiest um, land ports in the country, the Bait Breach Border Post. Let's now speak to the MEC for Health in Limpopo, Dr. Popi Ramatuba. Um, Dr. Popi Ramatuba, MEC, good morning and welcome to the agenda. First of all, how would you describe the situation that Limpopo is currently facing? Morning, Adrian, and morning to all your viewers, and, and thank you very much uh, for giving us this opportunity. Yes, indeed, as a province, we did anticipate that as we approach our festive season, Limpopo is known to be a tourism destination, and also Limpopo, most of our young people are in other provinces to, uh, during the course of the year for economic activities, and, and we know that come festive season, they would be coming back home. And, and what is currently, what we are seeing is, is mainly the result of the inter-provincial trans, uh, trans, uh, uh, trans, uh, transfer and also the, the issue of uh, people uh, moving from one area to another, especially when you look at uh, so, social gatherings. We have noted that most of our people uh, are not uh, heeding the call as made by the president to say we must stay home so that we stay safe. That is why for the first time since the 16th of March uh, this year, when we recorded our first case of COVID-19, even during the July, during the first wave, we have never recorded uh, the number that we have recorded in the past 24 hours, which is uh, 676. So it is a real concern. If we, you look at uh, how the number of active cases, we used to be the least uh, province, but as we speak today, we have already uh, there are provinces like uh, Northern Cape, Pumalanga, uh, and even uh, which are uh, now uh, performing better than, than our province. So, yes, it, it is an area of concern. We will continue to make the call to our people to say, can they please stay at home? Because if they do that, uh, they will be able to protect not only themselves and also their loved ones. But we are also saying to those who are traveling from other provinces to say, look, when you, 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 you are welcome uh, to come to Limpopo province, even as a tourist. But however, make sure that when you arrive, treat yourself as being COVID positive. Treat those that you are visiting as if they are COVID positive. Treat your family members as if they are, posi they are positive and yourself. And then in that way, you will be able to wear your mask at all times and you will be able to, to hand sanitize and also and make sure that social distance is being practiced and proper hygiene, cleaning of door handles at home, making sure that surfaces are continuously clean with water and soap so that whenever someone who might be positive touches does not leave the virus for the other person to come and touch. If we do that, because Adrian, I can tell you, this morning I was dealing with one family where there is a daughter who came back from Hauteng and tested a positive, was asymptomatic, uh, but... After testing positive, we then did the, the whole family now. Uh, five days later since uh, she has arrived, uh, I think it's day seven now, they have all, the whole family, I think it's around 15 uh, of them who have tested positive, including the aunt and the uncle, because over the last weekend they had some family gatherings. So these are the, sh the issues that are really called for concern for us as a province. MEC, earlier on this week as well, you spoke about um, those people who are involved in um, car accidents, that if you are involved in a car accident after the curfew, you will be stabilized, but after that you will be arrested as well. And I want to ask this on based on what you mentioned there, and also just to post this to what um, the health department has said in its statement, that it may need to um, enforce even stricter regulations. Do you think that that's the way to go? That is the way to go because really if unless there is accountability and taking responsibility of our action by our citizen we are not going to win uh, this particular battle because as, as we are speaking even last night i was checking early this morning with my team and my managers in different facilities we are still having to deal with a lot of drunk and driving cases in our facilities we are also still dealing with issues of uh, drunk and step wounds here and, and I think if really we were to be very strict that if you are found drinking at that time or found outside your household at that particular time, 
you should be arrested. You should be able to face uh, the law. If unless we do that, there, there is no consequence uh, 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 on on all our actions in, as as citizens. We are all compatible in saying what is the government doing? What is the government doing in order to protect us? Forgetting that at the end of the day, our health becomes our responsibility as each and every individual. So that is why, of course, as a province, we are even making calls to say, look, the curfew of, of 22 hours probably must go back to 7, uh, 19 hours, even, even, even more than that, so that really people can start to, to take this very serious. We, we are also saying, you know, in July, when people test positive, they, we will be finding that they are positive because we are screening them as contact. Unfortunately, this time around, most of our people are even sick. Even those that test positive today, after two days, they will be admitted in our hospital very sick. So you can see that this variant, it's coming very strongly and it is going to take our lives if indeed we don't do something very serious. So uh, I said it earlier on that very soon the honeymoon for the people of Limpopo will be over unless they start to listen. But if you can go to Tulamela municipality now, you will see that in Tabani Mall, it is full to capacity. And then you ask yourself, people are coming from other provinces. You are coming to visit your family members, not to come to, to be in the mall. If it's not necessary for you to be, go to the mall, why are you going to the mall? If I'm not a next of kin, why am I forcing to be in the funeral? Why should we have after tears for the funeral? Can't we go back to the 50 number of attending funerals? Do we need the president to come and take us to level five? Hard lockdown for us to be able to comply. Honestly speaking, we, we will continue to make this call that let's take the responsibility of our health. Okay, let me see what sort of um, stricter regulations then would you like to see? We have made our own uh, submission uh, to the Minister of Health and we will be able to, to see what, what would uh, be happening. But uh, strict measures must be, it, it, it will not be correct for me to talk about. Can you uh, give us an idea, can, can you give us an idea, MEC, of what sort of strict measures those would be? Do, would, do, I do think I've already... Sorry, MEC, go ahead. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying I've already indicated that we need to put up measures to enforce the curfew and also extend these particular hours. We've already indicated that gatherings, especially gatherings, really. For me, I've been asking people, we can, you can postpone a wedding. You can, because it is that particular wedding which has resulted in one family, all of them being infected and having others being sick from that particular wedding. It, it, we can stop these uh, social gatherings. Really, it not, it's not a must. We can continue with funerals, but with limited numbers. So there are quite a number of uh, uh, areas that we can improve on. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a festive season. It's holidays. We want to be with our families. Let's protect ourselves. Let's stay at home and have those with my close members of the family that I'm always spending time with. I can still have a, a, a proper festive season and enjoy myself with them sure. without having to go to a street bash. Sure. MEC, one of the other um, pressure points in your province is um, the Bait Bridge border post. What's the situation like at the moment? And can you confirm to us um, how many deaths have been reported so far? I think the, the, the deaths that have been uh, confirmed to us were the last time when we checked were at five. Uh, these are the deaths that only three of them we were able to, an inquest has been opened. They, the pathologists are busy with the postmortems. I'm just waiting for their report. Only three. The, the remaining, uh, those are natural causes which the family members came and, and claimed uh, the body. Oh, I must also indicate there is also another one with, with the natural causes and that one, uh, unfortunately, is an unknown. Uh, it might be a proper funeral, but we are still working with the municipality, with the police, with everyone to try to trace who could be the relatives, but it's an unknown. Mm -hmm. But we should also correct the fact that there are four truck drivers who have a uh, demise, and uh, that is not true. What we know is that there is one uh, truck driver, uh, of course, who unfortunately has passed on, and, and we will be able to give full details uh, as soon as we, we get all our postmortem results.
I must also indicate uh, that, yes, in, in, in terms of the challenges that were there, the, the Department of Health, you would have noted that uh, the, why, we used to demand the 72-hour uh, result, but because people... Uh, they've had that as a pro as a province or as government as South Africans in our port health we have put a, a mobile laboratory NHLS which tests you if uh, we do antigen tests in case we don't have those results or in case they've expired but now people were abusing the system they would drive all the way from uh, Cape Town going to neighboring countries without the 72 hour result hoping they will be tested there. Those were the parts that were talking uh, the queue and not uh, moving. So what we have decided, you would have noted that National Department of Health has pronounced, we, you, are, you are allowed, we have, uh, will remain with our only screening, which we have reinforced by a number of community health workers that were deployed. We have also, as a province, uh, beef up the staff for public health by deploying a number of professional nurses so that they can be able to screen uh, those who are sick, uh, in the, especially those in the buses. But this morning, as I was speaking to Captain uh, Razilani, who is one of the pol police uh, women who is in charge uh, in, in the border post, was reassured that all private vehicles have been cleared. We are left with trucks, and the, the problem now is no longer with us, it, as she has explained. Uh, what could be the problems, those who are checking other documentations. So we, we cannot be blaming uh, the government now for the current challenges that are, are there. And of course, Adriana must indicate that led by the Department of Home Affairs, uh, we will, as a province, uh, join them and the staff of Port Health to start planning as early as tomorrow for what will happen when they start coming back uh, during the course of the week. Because when they come back to the country, that's when we must be able to reinforce and make sure that uh, everyone who might be COVID positive must be able to be quarantined, must be detected at the border post so that we can reduce the rate of transmission of the virus into our province and our country. Okay. MEC, earlier on you spoke about um, the high number of cases that the province is currently experiencing and you attributed this also to this new variant. Can you confirm indeed whether the province does have um, cases of COVID-19 related confirmed cases but with aspects of this new variant? We, we really cannot confirm uh, on, on, on that but... Uh, as a, as a country, as part of South Africans, as I've indicated, the, that this interprovincial movement of people from one area transferring to the Limpopo province, obviously the, the variant would definitely uh, have been. Because the other thing which made me to be, even if I do not have uh, the evidence, you can say this variant has been detected on patients so and so. But the nature at which uh, scientists have described it, to say, unlike during our first wave, this current variant is attacking young people. Uh, we have seen our young people between age 15 and 25 being forming part of the majority of those that are currently uh, being infected. And we have seen the rapid spread of this virus. If you look, Adrian, the day before yesterday, actually, if I'm to start a uh, day four, past four days ago, we have seen, we recorded new cases as 165 as a province. The following day, we recorded a 24-hour increase of 386, then followed by 396. Today, I'm telling you of 676. So that tells you it can never be that a, 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 a way, the first way that we were dealing with a, during June. Okay, um, seem to have a problem there with the network with the MEC, but we'll try to get the MEC again and probably have a conversation. Okay, the, we understand that the MEC is back. MEC, um, just quickly then in conclusion, um, next year, or rather next week will mark a year since China has reported to the WHO around the COVID-19 um, case and of course the work that you have done in the province in receiving some of those students out of Wuhan. What are some of your reflections and lessons that have been learned? What do we need to, to indicate to say that the opportunity that as Limpopo 
uh, government, we were honored by the national government. At that time, many of the people did not see it as an opportunity to host those who were coming from Wuhan. But today, when we reflect some of us back, that is a time which assisted us in beginning to learn and study the virus. Because remember, as a novel virus, which none of us knew anything about, there's no medical doctor who could have claimed that they studied it or is there in any textbook. So we were forced to follow how the, the other countries, how our European counterparts have been dealing with it, how the Americans were dealing with it. So as a province, it made us to start to want to understand how the virus uh, get uh, to infect people, how it spread. You remember when we said to people who were in the South King at that time, uh, please don't come back to the province. It's because we were following up what we saw happening in Italy, that after they had lockdown, People move from Italy to to their uh, rural areas and provinces, and that's when they started to spread, uh, the spread. So as a province, we did really grow up during that period. We became stronger, and we understood the virus uh, better, and it has helped us to fight the first wave. And that's why even today, when we are faced with this resurgence, we are still saying, let's go back and look at what the people of Wuhan has been able to fight this virus to say it doesn't move with us who transmit the virus so if you limit the interprovincial movement you will be able to reduce uh, the spread of this virus if indeed you stay at home you lock yourself you don't need somebody to tell you to do that you will be able to stop the spread we've seen them coming back having tested negative but we still quarantine them for another 14 days and still after they've tested negative that's when. Okay, the line seems to be failing us there. But we got the gist of exactly what it is that the MEC had to reflect on since um, the first case of COVID 19 was reported by China to the WHO. And of course, the reparations that South Africa was part of evacuating some of those students who were in Wuhan.